Hiya folks, well as you know we've had this air fryer since last April and we've used it a hell of a lot Sharon, haven't we? Yep. And a lot of you have been asking how do you clean an air fryer? Well, we haven't purposely cleaned this one because we knew somewhere down the line we was going to be doing a video like this, so this one is actually filthy. So let's clean it with you and show you what we think is probably one of the better ways of cleaning it. So cleaning an air fryer is pretty similar to cleaning an oven, but as you well know, it's a job which most people don't want to tackle. Yeah, I hate that and all. You do hate it, don't you? But lucky enough, because you're not down on your knees, now when you're cleaning one of these, you can do it on your worktop. So there's a big benefit to cleaning one of these to the main oven, and that can involve some really harsh chemicals. It yeah, make you cough yeah. and all that when you've cleaned that before, isn't it? And we've let this one get really dirty. We've dirty. kept we've kept the tray. Dirty. We've kept the trays clean which the things you pull in and out. So we've done that, but the main air fryer body itself, which is what everybody keeps on about, how do you clean up where the fan is, where the element is, that's the main thing. So you're out of sight, it's out of mud, do not yeah. it? Yeah, because when you normally pull that out, you don't really get a lot of splashage, do you? No. But with an oven, as you well know, you can get a lot of baked on stuff that uh, will stick, and because it's on the top, it's very hard to see, unless you get below it and look up and that's what we've done and that's why we're bringing you this video because we're now at the stage where we think this really does need a good deep clean. So the thing which most of us deal with, as you know, when we pull the trays out, these are the things that you basically try to keep clean as clean as possible. And how do you normally do these, baby? Uh, fairy liquid in and warm water straight away. So as soon as she's taking the food out, we normally put some fairy liquid in there, boof, put it under the hot tap, give it an agitate and you normally leave them on the side, don't yeah. you? And then you'll come back to them, you'll take the crisper tray out, you'll put that in the sink, give it a wash around, and then you'll give that a swish out, because that's got a Teflon mm -hmm. coating. You don't use an abrasive in there, do you? No, I've never um, used, put them in the dishwasher either, though some people do and I won't. Yeah, well, if you read the manuals, they say that, that the trays are dishwasher proof, and then somewhere else in the, in the manual, it says that you shouldn't put them in the dishwasher. And we've noticed that with these, that the, although they're Teflon coated, they're not the greatest Teflon coated items because if you look at the bottom of them now you can probably see there where the feet are and where it goes in and out the Teflon coating and same on your one as well mm. the Teflon coating is actually worn off this is what I use these scarers these non-scratch which are made out, they're made out of plastic they look like they're metal don't get them confused with the metal ones and all the products we're going to be using folks we're going to be leaving below in the description so that you could actually see the same stuff we're actually using Right, so first things first, we're going to show you how we tackle these. These do need a bit of a deep clean, although we do wash them like we've just yeah. told you, you do get baked on grime on them. So let's have a closer look at these. So this is the crisper plate, which you can see there, top and bottom, and they've got them little rubber inserts on the end there, Sharon. Yeah, they? Now they, hold, hold on to that, baby. That's them little things there, and you can get a lot of grime that sits behind them. So you want to get in there with a toothbrush and get them out when you're doing a really deep clean. So as you can see, we've got a couple there which are split. I don't know whether they actually make replacements ones of them. That just gives it a little bit of tension when you're pushing it in, in the actual tray itself. So basically, that will just be cleaned with soapy hot water and a dishwasher soap. Now this thing, as you well know, that we... Um, we wash as well, but you can probably see down at the bottom there, can you see the, the brown staining you got there? That's sort of baked in, that's the stuff that bakes on, because don't forget these are normally up to 180 degrees centigrade, up to 200 degrees centigrade and more, and you know, they get baked on. But you can see around the, the edges there where you've got sort of caked in stuff, so we need to get that out. And also, sometimes your handles can come a little bit loose, folks, and here's the fixing screws for the handles. So you might want to just get a screwdriver and just nip them uh, screws up there in case you, if your handles are a little bit wonky. You'll probably find that with a cheaper one, Sharon. Yeah. The cheaper ones tend to loosen off yeah, quite a not, bit more, we've been told. They're not loose at all. No, these they? ain't loose no. at all, but we've heard that the uh, cheaper models, the handles can loosen off. So, yet again, taking this one out, as you can see around the top here, you've got that sort of baked on. That's just burnt stuff, in there. Yeah, it? just burnt yeah. stuff on there, which uh, doesn't normally come and off. Also, there. Yeah, and also around the, the edge of the rim as well. It's quite sticky along there as well. That can build up yeah. quite a lot. 
So before we actually put these into the sink and clean them that way, what we're gonna do, we're gonna give our main part of our air fryer a little head start as well. And the way we're gonna do that is with what, Sharon? Hot water, I'm gonna drop a dishwasher tablet in there. Right. And some lemon. Right, okay, I'll get the hot water. There we go, folks. So all we're literally gonna do is to give these a bit of a head start just by putting some hot water in here with our dishwasher tablet. Just enough to cover the uh, crisper tray. You ain't gotta to go too mad, you ain't gotta fill them up or anything. And all we're gonna do basically is just give it a little bit of an agitate and as you can see that dishwasher tablet will totally break down in there. So that's basically what we're looking for. And then we're gonna replace the trays into our air fryer. So just put them into the air fryer like that. We're gonna turn it on and we're gonna put it on its maximum setting. So if we go up to max crisp, on this one it goes up to 240 degrees centigrade. We're gonna match so that we put both of them on together and we're gonna put the time down to 10 minutes and we're just gonna run them for 10 minutes and that will give us a great head start because what that will do is to start to loosen off all of the <laughs> grease on the top around the fan and around the element. It gives us a good head start there. Plus it also will make the lemon, lemon will help neutralize any yeah. odors that are in that as well while it's hot and it gets in all the little nooks and crannies. So we'll let that do its thing and then we'll take the drawers out, give the drawers a clean and while the main unit is cooling down a little bit because you can't touch a hot element and then we'll work on the inside of the air, uh, the air fryer and start getting all that caked on stuff which you've just seen in them pictures. What's in there? Okay folks, it has stopped now. Now you probably saw from the video that we had steam coming out the front. Don't worry about that. These aren't vapor proof doors that, that you will get steam come out possibly when you're cooking as well. That don't really worry, worry us in the slightest. So let's just open that drawer up now. And as you can see, that's totally dissolved in there. That lemon smell and all that. Can you smell that baby? What's it smell yeah. like? Yeah, oh it's burnt a bit, <laughs> lemon. The What's lemon's been cooking in there. <laughs> so we take this one out as well. And basically what that would have done, folks, is give us a head start up there. You can't sit up there at the moment. So we're just going to leave that in there now because that's warm in there. So Sharon's going to take this over now to the sink, empty it out, and then she's going to clean these out. We'll show you how we do that. All right, okay, rather than go over to the sink, Sharon's just said, why don't I bring the bowl to Muhammad, the mountain to Muhammad. So there we go. We're just going to tip that liquid out there, folks. There you go. And now she'll take the crisper tray out. Now don't forget, it's going to be hot, folks. And that water in there, as you know, that's got a dishwasher tablet in it. So we're actually going to use that and just have a little clean about inside our container. And Sharon, I'll just give that a light scrub. Now don't forget, this container is a Teflon base container, so you don't want to be scratching this. And all Sharon's using is this little plastic, um, not abrasive, it's a quite a coarse cloth, basically. She's just going to go around and give that a good scrub around in there, and hopefully that will remove all of the... Uh, the burnt on bits which we've uh, had. Don't forget that being heated up, that would have all softened off in the hot water. So here we go folks, you can probably see there, we've got some of that burnt on crusty stuff around the top there. So just give it a good bit of a wipe there, shall we? Little bit of a Little bit of application. And as you can see already, that's coming off already. You can see already folks, look that bit that was on the top there, has now sort of disappeared. And she's just gonna carry on with that all the way around, and then we'll come back to you. You see Sharon's doing it on the worktop there. We don't want to immerse this handle in all this dirty water. Well, it's not dirty, this contaminated water, let's say. Because trying to get dirty water in there and get it all out, you could be just feeding bacteria in there. So we're keeping this area dry from all that dirty water. So one of the other places you wanna be looking at as well is the underside. Make sure you uh, give that a good wipe down and also, and this is where an old toothbrush comes in handy folks, just to sort of get into these little areas here, just to get where some grime can collect without getting it too saturated. And then getting your cloth and just giving it a wipe over. Well, and all around these edges as well folks, you can get a toothbrush and literally just go around there, give that a good scrape around there as well with the same solution, all around there. and then obviously dry it off afterwards. Wipe it off and make sure you can uh, see where you've been. There we go, that's how we deal with that. 
So spinning it over now, we've given this a good scrub out inside now. Although it looks patchy, we're gonna give it a good rinse out now under the hot water tap and even down these little vents here, just to flush through any possible food that might have got in there. We didn't wanna do it with that water over there because that water was very, very dirty and uh, we didn't wanna put any sort of bacterias in there. So put it under the hot tap, give it a good wash out and that's what I'm gonna do now. So literally just its final rinse off. Some hot slurpy water all over. As I mentioned, all down inside the handle there as well. And we'll do the same to the other one and we'll come back to you. Right folks, well, we've done the best we can with them now. And as you can see from that water, the sort of color it is now and all the, all the crap, that, and that's only just come off of these two trays inside and out. Let me just show them that first, yeah? The crisper tray. So there's our crisper tray, folks. As you can remember, we had all bits of uh, hard and fast food around the uh, rubber bungs there. That's lovely and clean now. And if we just show you that now, as you can see in there, how much better that is now compared to what it was. The, the camera doesn't really do it justice, to be honest with you, but um, it's a lot better than what it was. These screws are tight. We have checked them screws as well, so we are tight. So that crisper tray can go back in now. So that is basically both of our drawers now done. So this thing's been standing now for a while. It should have cooled down a bit now, but um, first thing we're gonna do is wipe the bottom out. There is some sort of food residue that does get stuck in here at the back. Look at that, look. So Sharon's just pouring out some more hot water. And what are you gonna be putting in there, baby? A little bit of fairy liquid in as well. So we're just gonna use a bit of normal dishwasher washing up liquid. There we go. It's hot. There we go. And all we're gonna do basically is just literally, is just give a good wipe out, first of all. Now don't forget, you shouldn't really be getting any food in this area initially. But as I say, it's just worth getting that initial wipe out. Now you'll probably see down in there, you've got little crumbs down in there. So when we turn this upside down, we'll hopefully get all them out. You wanna keep this clean, otherwise you can get like we've got there, we've got rubbing marks there where there's been a bit of possible grit in there maybe. So we'll just give that a wipe out for the moment. Right, and now we're gonna turn the unit over. So Sharon's just gonna spin it up, upside down, put it on its towel endings. Here we go, and this is where you're gonna see. Did you see all that stuff fall out, out of them grooves there? There were some grooves there, look, you can see them, bits of uh, stuff that's fallen out of there. And as you can see, as we showed you before, that's how dirty they are. Now, what we're gonna do here, is we want our toothbrush and we also want our other cleaner which we've got here this thing is called the pink stuff it is a slight abrasive and it's um, non-toxic and we find that this is ideal for something like this them oven cleaner things can be a bit toxic shall can't they I don't like them with the dogs yeah let's just rub this bit here like this and give that a good old scrub with this brush Again, I'm not going on the plastic with this, I'm just going literally on the, uh, the inner side edge of the air fryer. And bearing in mind, this one is quite bad, folks, so uh, don't forget we've only done this and left this like this so that we could actually produce this video. This is the bit that could take a bit of time. So again, it's just a little hot water solution. So let's just wipe that off. There we go, and let's see what we're left with. And I think you'll agree, that already there is looking a whole lot better. So what we're gonna try and do now, is just use this cloth now, with a bit of our pink stuff. And literally, the bits where you can do with your hand, just sort of, Try and get in there. And you probably find that you can get quite a bit of that under, under and around the uh, element, first of all. Now I've not been rubbing for a long time here, but we'll have a look in a second and just see if this is any good. There we go. So let's wipe that out of there. And I think you'll see we're making headway there. Can you see that already? So for the bits underneath, 
under the element for example so because this toothbrush is slightly the wrong shape folks what we're going to do Sharon, just like that baby and i'm just gonna just warm it up a little bit there folks look just warm it up and you'll find that you'll be able to bend that back in a minute there we go right there okay love right so we'll just let that go hard for a second folks and I'm that will be under cold water yeah that will be our in fact challenge right i'm going to run that under cold water now right there you go so i've just run that under cold water and as you can see it's firmed up nicely so we're just going to sort of get it under that element and just do where you can you just got to do where you can folks there's no simple way of this and i don't want to flood in there with water i'll put my cloth in now there's no easy way i'm afraid people so as you can see it is starting to break down in there now so we're gonna have to spend a bit of time obviously and get this done as much as we can and uh we'll carry on and then we'll come back to you using the same principles we've just shown you there well we ain't gonna lie to you folks this is a pain to clean <laughs> this is the first time perhaps we shouldn't have let it go for nigh on a year uh, that's probably the biggest problem because this was really grimed up, wasn't it? Well, that was awful. And it so, but I, she's had a go. I've had a go. We've only done one chamber just to show you the difference between the two chambers, and no way is it perfect, folks. So, the lesson learnt from this is yes, them cleaning products that we've used are good, but it's just you you can't get in there. Mm. The cleaning products take the stuff off, but you just can't get to everywhere under that element with that fan in the way as well. You know what they need to do? What? Invent a self-cleaning air fryer, like our so-called self-cleaning oven, which aren't really self-cleaning, so... Well, they're not self-cleaning now, are they? No, they say they are, but they're not, are they? It's what you women will know. They're not. What they need to do is to make air fryers with perhaps some sort of extractable tray above the element that you can take out to clean. Mm. Like, th there must be a design feature where you can do that. Anyway, let's show you how far we've got we've, we've been on it for about an hour we've just been on one cubicle let's show you so that's what we started with folks as you can remember it was well caked up and we've got it to somewhere looking not too bad but you can obviously see that it's not all been cleaned and there's some stuff under there which we just literally cannot get to but when you wipe a cloth over there to where you can get to you uh you don't get any residue come off on your hands so that's the sort of thing which it was like, but as I say, even we had a little go of that one as well, and uh, you can see from the pictures that what the condition was in, but that is probably about the best you're gonna be able to achieve if it was as dirty as what we've had, or this one was. The only thing you can do is to, perhaps once a week, just stuff a microfiber cloth in there and literally just rotate the fan like that underneath, and then just give it a sort of bit of agitation with some hot soapy water on the microfiber cloth. If you do that both sides, you probably won't get the build up which we've had. As far as cleaning these fan blades are concerned, the easiest way we found was to get your finger in and out of that gap there, that little gap there, with the cleaning paste on the cloth and literally just rubbing backwards and forwards. But obviously you can't do the back of the blades really, because you haven't really got the space in there to go and do the back of the blades. But as you can see, that's what we've ended up with, folks. It's not perfect, but it's well better than what it was. And all I can say, folks, is I'm agitated now after that. <laughs> anyway, so that was our best attempts at uh, cleaning our Ninja AF400. There is no easy way, folks. We've come to that conclusion. There is no easy way. All we would suggest, as I said to you, is don't let it get as dirty as what this one was. Do it once a month. Just go around there and clean the way we just suggested and that way you shouldn't get the build up which we've got. But them cleaning products which we did use in here, which have got us to that far, mm. uh, we left a, a link in the description below. Next week, we'll be getting over the Kasori 5.5 litre XXL air fryer, which we've been using uh, for six to eight months now. We're gonna be doing a full look at that one, a tear down to find out exactly how that's lasted. As you say, the only problem with this one is the cleaning because the chambers above are so small. The Kasori over there has got quite a larger area there. So we're expecting that to be a lot easier to, uh, to clean. So that is a video coming up on the Kasori XXL 5.5 litre. Do check that one out next week. Anyway, we're gonna leave you with that now. 
we're going to just make sure we keep on top of this now and uh, we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye bye. Bye for now. And don't let anyone tell you cleaning one of these is easy. No. It's not. No, it's horrible. Inside. Oh, Ooh, that was a bit inside. <laughs> inside. Delete. <laughs>